What's going on, guys? It's Jimmy here. Welcome to our daily show where we discuss everything going on here in our country that you need to know about here on a daily basis. In this video, we got multiple things here for you guys to uh, let you guys catch you guys up on here, uh, including two key deadlines in February to claim checks up to $800 and the exact dates on how you can get this $800. Also, I'll let you know the winners of the New Year's Day giveaways contest that we did here. So I'll let you guys know here on that here as well. Also, I want to wish everybody a happy Friday the 13th. Yeah, let me know if anything interesting happens to you guys here on Friday the 13th. Yeah, it's just uh, one of those days, right? Yeah. Kevin McCarthy says he will look at expunging the former President Donald Trump impeachments that the House passed when the Democrats were in control. Yeah, so really this would just kind of be ceremoniously because remember that he was impeached in the House, but they didn't pass the impeachments in the Senate to fully impeach him and, you know, kick him out because there wasn't enough Republican votes in the Senate to get the two thirds that's required here. But yeah, Speaker Kevin McCarthy, the Republican leader from California, who's now in control of the Senate, said Thursday that he would consider expunging one or both of former President Donald Trump's impeachments, which they can do with just a uh, a 50% vote plus one vote. So Republicans could do this with just Republican only votes in the House, I believe. Quote, I would understand why members would want to bring that forward. So as long as all the Republicans voted for this, they could probably do this, McCarthy said. In a response to a question at a press conference on Thursday before listing off several other key priorities for House Republicans. But I understand why individuals want to do it, and we'd look at it, he added. In the last Congress, a group of more than 30 House Republicans, led by Representative Mark Wayne Mullen, put forward a resolution to expunge Trump's impeachment in the wake of January 6, 2021 attack on the Capitol. The resolution was supported by the fourth ranking Republican in the House. A smaller group, again, led by Mullen, also introduced a resolution to expunge Trump's December 2019 impeachment for allegedly attempting to withhold military aid from Ukraine in an effort to pressure the country to investigate the business dealings of President Biden's son, Hunter Biden. Now, personally, I think that the Ukraine dealing impeachment would be easier for them to get expunged. Remember that the January 6th impeachment, remember that former President Donald Trump was actually impeached twice in the House. Technically, that's an impeachment. When you get impeached in the House, that's considered an impeachment. The full you know, ex expel expulsion of a president is not done if it's not uh, completed in the Senate. But um, so technically an impeachment, so technically like former President Bill Clinton was also impeached as well, but not, you know, uh, technically ousted as a president, okay? Because of the Senate, you need two thirds of a vote in the Senate, okay? That's very difficult to do. It's basically any Republican and Democratic support, whether, you know, Bill Clinton was a Democrat, for, uh, former president, you know, former president Bill Clinton, former president Donald Trump was a Republican. So you can see both kind of sides there. But um, so you need you need cooperation on both sides to kind of get that there. OK, um, but I think that if they do go ahead and do this, it's just kind of a, uh, you know, a ceremonious thing. It's not going to really really do anything but just kind of just kind of show kind of a sign of uh support for him so 
you guys can let me know your thoughts here on this. But I think that uh, ex expelling or expunging the Ukraine impeachment would be easier because the January 6th one is kind of still being investigated. And there were Republicans that voted against Donald Trump from the House and from the Senate for that. So um, there's still Republicans that speak out against former President Donald Trump in that instance. So I don't know. There was, there, I think they can only get, I think it's like four or five votes that they could afford to lose and have it pass. So they would definitely, I think, go for the Ukraine impeachment first and see if they could get it to vote, get it to pass. Honestly, they would probably go behind closed doors and just count the votes and and not do it publicly because if, if they don't have the votes, I don't think they would even try it. It would probably make the most sense. If they could get that to pass, they would do it. Then they'd probably just, again, go behind closed doors and see if they could get the January 6th impeachment expunged, again, behind closed doors. If they don't have the votes, it would just make sense to not even try it if you're just looking at this from a Republican point of view. You guys can let me know your thoughts here in the comments. Uh, speaking of former President Donald Trump, this just came in today. Uh, the Trump Organization hit with a $1.6 million fine for a criminal tax fraud scheme. Yeah, so the details on this, the Trump Corp and the Trump Payroll Corporation, two subsidies of the Trump Organization, all bearing the name of former President Donald Trump and his corporations, were both sentenced to the maximum possible fines under New York laws. The Trump Organization has denied wrongdoings and is planning to appeal the verdict, which I'm sure they will. Well, not necessarily, but we'll see. The subsidies were found guilty last month on 17 counts, including tax fraud, falsifying business records, and conspiracy, as part of what prosecutors had called a sweeping and audacious scheme to compensate company executives off the books. The verdict by New York City jury marked the first ever criminal convictions of Trump's companies. One of those executives was former Trump Organization Chief Financial Officer Alan Weisberg, who pleaded guilty to tax fraud charges last summer and agreed to cooperate with prosecutors against his longtime employer. The Manhattan District Attorney's Office accused Weisselberg of receiving more than $1.7 million in unreported compensation over more than a decade, uh, and he had worked with Trump for multiple decades. New York Attorney General um, Lolita James says, quote, today the Trump Organization has been sentenced for committing years of tax fraud and must pay $1.6 million the maximum penalty. Uh, also says here, and I will always work to ensure any individual or organization that cheats New Yorkers is brought to justice. The sentencing proves once again that no one is above the law, not even Donald Trump or his business. So you guys can let me know your thoughts here on that. Yeah, Weisselberg, who is the CFO, was a 75-year-old former executive who worked for Donald Trump's family since 1973. So he worked with them for, what is that here? That's 27 plus 20 more years. That's uh, like 47, almost 50 years. So he worked with the Trump Organization for a long time, long time. Reuters reported that the Trump, organiza Trump Organization is still paying Weisselberg's lawyers, as well as a prison consultant, to help prepare him for jail at New York's notorious Rikers Island facility. A Trump Organization spokesperson said in a statement Friday morning that Alan Weisselberg is a victim. He was threatened, intimidated, and terrorized. He was given a choice of pleading guilty and serving 90 days in prison 
or serving the rest of his life in jail. All of this over a corporate car and standard employee benefits. Wow. A Trump spokesman said, we did nothing wrong and we will appeal this verdict. Okay, next up, two key deadlines in February to claim checks up to $800. Exact dates to apply for cash back. As you can see here, here's the details on this. February 15th marks the deadline for two major rebates or checks in South Carolina and for Hurricane Ian victims. Here's the details. Florida and South Carolina are two states with extended deadlines. For This is going to be for millions of people here. South Carolina is issuing one-time relief payments as residents facing high inflation. If you've been watching my channel here, you know that there's about 35 states that uh, issued state stimulus checks in 2022 or inflation relief checks property tax relief checks, and all sorts of different checks for 2022. And there's going to be even more or some amount of states issuing checks here in 2023. And we're already starting to see some of these happen here. So South Carolina is issuing one-time relief payments as residents face high inflation. Yeah, and you can see here, South Carolina residents are in line to get up to $800 in payments. The state officially started uh, sending the one-time relief payments last month, but all payments should be delivered by the end of the year. But they have now extended these. They have now extended these uh, to more than 1.3 million rebates. Rebates will be issued via direct deposits, paper checks, or banking information. Yeah. So... They are now delivering these payments. The second rebate is a tax extension for Florida residents who were impacted by the hurricane. Both rebates were given an extension, and all claims must be sent by February 15th to grab the cash. Below, we've detailed the eligibility to claim both payments. South Carolina deadline. South Carolina taxpayers now have until February 15th to claim their 2021 individual tax return or to file it. The amount based received is based on their 2021 tax liability, and taxpayers should start seeing checks arrive in March if they haven't filed and got their checks yet. Tax liability means money left over after subtracting credits from their income tax they owed. For those who have tax liabilities under $800, the rebate will equal the tax liability for that number. Hurricane Ian deadline began in September and was one of the worst hurricanes in the state's history. They reported in December that the official death toll had reached 144. The IRS announced last year that due to Florida hurricane, eligible residents will now have until February 15th, 2023 as well to file various individual and business tax returns and make tax payments. This means those who had a valid extension to file their 2021 returns will now have until the new date. Also, the winners for the trivia contest from New Year's Eve, New Year's Day um, were, or the questions were, how long is the, how large is the Times Square New Year's Eve ball in diameter? The answer was 12 feet, and the winners that were picked at random were Elizabeth Wade and Randy Arrowwood, and the question was, how much does the Times Square ball weigh? And the answer is 11,875 pounds, almost six tons, and the winners were Ted Irvin and Ambi for life. Ambi for life. So, um, and I have contacted those winners, but I want to say their names here uh, as well. So uh, congratulations on winning, and we'll be doing uh, more of these here as well. So stay tuned.
If you haven't yet, make sure to click the subscribe button down below to our YouTube channel so you don't miss out on new videos that come out here every day at 10 a.m., 3 p.m., and 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, click the bell icon after you subscribe so you don't miss out. It's completely free to do so, and I'll keep you up to date here. Also, thanks so much for hitting the like button, and as you could share these videos here as well with anybody that needs to know this. I'll keep you up to date here. Here's some videos you can watch next. You can click here to watch my newest video next. And here is my newest video about social security changes. So you can click on one of those videos next. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.